What's up guys, my name is Khan, and we're back today with more Railroads Online, and today we're going to make some money, although I do have to talk, an update just dropped, it's a pretty major update actually, it added tutorials as well as a whole new industry, which is kind of crazy, so unfortunately, my map doesn't have it on it, which is, is kind of bad, but I did just check, and if you start a new game, you will have the new industry, and the new industry is actually pretty cool, it's a wheat farm. And we've got a wheat farm here, and uh, apparently the wheat farm takes seeds or something and outputs hay and something else. And uh, yeah, right now the whole industry chain isn't built, so I'm not too worried about it yet. But the devs did say that they're going to finish the rest of it in December. Check it out on Steam, guys, if you're interested. Uh, apparently they have a free weekend coming up as well in the update notes and they added of course tutorials to help you learn how to play the game and all that jazz so really really cool stuff and uh i think what might happen i did look on the new map the wheat farm does appear up here uh it says wheat farm and right now there's no real industry chain for it i think you just buy seeds from the freight depot supply it with seeds and then it outputs its products as i i think that's how it it said it in the update notes um I think that's what it said in the update notes, but what I might do is just continue to sort of play on this map until they come out with the full industry chain in December, and then I guess we'll have to restart and rebuild all this jazz, which took way too long. I'm driving slow today. I noticed with this update, there's apparently trees back on the tracks, so some of the tracks have trees on them, which is unfortunate. So I'm just driving nice and slow because I've already derailed like five times just setting up for this stupid video. And uh, we got to go down to the freight depot, make some money selling logs. And then, you know, if we have some money, we can buy some engines. I Oh, that's a nice little clock. Look at that. Pine Valley Manufacturing Co. Interesting. Anyway, I decided to name the company as well. Got a lot of suggestions. You guys leave great suggestions in the comments for company names. Uh, but I decided to go with the classic... Southern Highlands and Regional Transport, a.k.a. The Shart, and uh, I thought that would be a really good company name. It, it got suggested a few different times, and I felt like just having Shart written on the side of every car might look great. Um, these are, of course, the Lake Valley ones, but yeah, we're gonna, we're just gonna kind of make some money today, I guess. Maybe buy a locomotive. I also have the Tractive Effort sheet again, and, uh, you know, I'm a little disappointed. I looked at the Shea. We've got a 10% line coming out of the iron mine, right? Just a terrible, terrible 10% line. And I looked at the Shea, and in fact, Betsy, the porter, pulls 11,600 pounds up 10%, which isn't a lot. And the Shea only pulls 8,700 pounds up 10%. Although the Shea has more tractive effort than Betsy, it's not a lot. And the Shea weighs 47,000 pounds, where Betsy only weighs 16,000 pounds. So the extra weight of the Shea... It doesn't help for the extra, like, the, the Shea's tractive effort is over double Betsy's, but it's, it's extra weight kills it on the steep hills. So at 8%, the Shea becomes better, 22,000 pounds to Betsy's 18,000 pounds, but anything above 8%, Betsy is actually more powerful than the Shea, which is kind of hilarious. So we'd be better off buying a second porter, is basically what I'm getting to, uh, but what I think we'll do today is we'll, we'll make some money, number one, and then number two, we have to look at what Betsy can pull up 10%, which, or 4%, which is 49,000 pounds. Honestly, we should buy a Shea anyway, which I think I'm going to do, because up 4%, the Shea pulls 86,000 pounds. So if we're delivering logs and lumber from the sawmill up this 4% line, the Shea is going to really be an advantage. But up the 10%, we're honestly better off getting like a Class 48, which does 51,000 pounds. Um, realistically, the best thing to do is to get one of the big gear trains, the Heisler or the Climax, and, and they're just into the hundreds of thousands of pounds, up 10%. So, but yeah, with the Class 48, we could push one hopper car up 10% fully loaded, I think. And that's about it. So, we're just going to go back down to the freight depot. I'm going to try and get a Shea, I think. And then we can, uh, let's just, let's just give us some break here. Yeah, maybe, maybe 50%. Hopefully there aren't any trees. Oh my god, I forgot there's going to be trees. There's gonna be, let's go 100% break. Is there... I gotta be on the lookout. This update, for some reason, it put a few trees, like, not right on my track, but just right on the edge, where it's enough where the car hits it and dies. So I've just gotta be careful. But yeah, we're not gonna, we don't have a wheat farm on this update, on this map. I guess I could, uh, you know, I could, I could spawn a wheat farm and we could look at it, which we should do. I can put a wheat farm where it's supposed to be. Hold on, you know what, let's go do that. I looked at where it was. I don't know the exact position of it. But uh, I did look at where it was on the map, so let's go put it down. It should be up 
Uh, let's see. Yeah, no, here. It was a smelter was there. It was over here is where the devs had it on this map if you respawn a new one. So, again, I don't want to spawn a new map now because it does say in their update, right here, this is where they had it in this in this flat spot. Um, so, yeah, we could, we could put one here just because. It's nice that you can place industries. I don't remember the rotation they had it at exactly. Uh, maybe I could just... Something like that, probably? It's close enough? There we go. Look at that. Our beautiful wheat farm. So now we just bring it seed pallets, which, uh, Pine Valley Manufacturing Co. Interesting. Apparently we get those from the freight depot. I guess we could go see what it takes to load up seed pallets. We don't have a path to get here, though. And then we deliver it, uh, it, it outputs straw bales. And it outputs nothing. Just straw bales. And they have a space here for it to output something else. You know, this is going to be interesting. I have a feeling this wheat farm is going to be part of a much bigger chain. Oh, it outputs grain. Oh, it outputs grain in an actual, like, oh, this is sick. Yeah, it's a grain spout. It actually, like, we're going to have grain hopper. Oh, sick. It's like the, it's like the mines. That's great. That's so great. We're going to have grain hoppers. Oh, I'm really excited. That's going to be super, super cool. Yeah, anyway, I don't have a weed farm, obviously. There's no real uh, need for us to connect to it just yet. I'm going to leave it here for now. But I think what will happen is when uh, they do finish the rest of the industries, which, oh my god, I didn't. Uh, I, I should have I should have put a teleporter. It doesn't matter. I can, I can, I need to put teleporters all over this map, the telegraph offices. But anyway, when they finish the chain in December and they have the full chain for the wheat farm, I imagine the wheat farm is going to connect to some sort of a cattle type chain, you know, like you supply cattle with wheat and then the cattle produce you know you bring those to like maybe a food processing plant or something something along those lines but yeah either way once they connect the chain then i'll probably end up uh just honestly i'll probably end up restarting the whole map i don't really want to restart the whole map i could go around and place all the industries where they are but i also could just relay all this track in an afternoon and then restart the whole map so let me know what you guys think in the comments down below obviously i'm not going to do anything until i see the rest of the development chain but i am really excited to see more industries and products in railroads and line they also have the passenger car would love to see you know towns that have passengers that go back and forth between them even if they're just little towns and you have to make little passenger routes it would be a nice way to make early game money you know i'd be super excited about that as well because passenger trains and and cattle trains and supplying towns with food and products and stuff that would be fantastic because right now essentially we just sell money to the freight depot i'd love to supply towns with needs and have the town needs change as the town population changes that would be you know real railroads um Railroad Tycoon type stuff, you know? That was... I, I was always a big fan of those games. I guess while we're rolling down here, I'm going to take a look at the rest of the updates. Um, so yeah, free weekend, November 16th to November 20th. Pretty much this weekend right now. Uh, it's going to be right at the time of this video coming out, actually. So fantastic. Uh, they added tutorials, new industries, the wheat farm. Um, okay, hold on. I can just... I can... There we go. I'm putting too much brake on. Um... They changed the speed limits of the Montezuma and the Eureka. That's exciting. More loco speed increases will come later with fuel type changes. That's cool. If we can convert the wood engines into coal burners as we expand, that would be great. Like every engine in this game, well, not every engine, there are differences, but it would be cool if there were more engines that were like hybrid, you know, you could use whatever fuel you want. And if you use coal, it would be more efficient than using wood. Um, added better lighting. Started a local Montezuma, now as a headlight, and then just a bunch of bug fixes. So, pretty exciting stuff, but uh, yeah, new industry wheat farm, rest of the chain will be added in December. So, really excited to see how that industry chain goes, and uh, I think I'm going to probably be laying a whole bunch of new track when that actually when that actually gets updated. I'll take a look at it, but I have a feeling that's what we're going to do. I know me, and like, I wouldn't be satisfied if I just went around my existing map and placed the industries as close as the devs did. I wouldn't feel legit, you know? I'd have to go back and delete all my track and restart over on a new map as intended by the devs, which is fine. I'm okay with it. I've come to terms with it. I've accepted the fact that I'll spend six hours track laying. Maybe I'll just record it all and throw it in some crazy time lapse just to get back to where we are. Look at that little tree. That little tree was almost a problem. But yeah, either way, um, you know, it is what it is. I love the fact that we can we can haul at like 30 mile an hour though without our stuff derailing. That's great. I love I love this track too, but I would I would spend the time to relay it if the devs 
update the whole industry chain. So we could actually buy like four four plank flats basically of the small ones and maybe go up with some sawmill products. We can do that. I guess I guess I should probably do that. That'll probably make more money than just trying to sell logs to the sawmill, I would imagine. Selling logs is probably not as profitable as just flat up. Yeah. You know what? Let's go get one la one batch of logs and I'll sell one batch of logs with Betsy and see what that does and then we'll uh and then we'll go buy some plank cars and maybe do one run up to this the uh, iron mine with plank cars because we can do four cars worth of products that'll get us some iron then we need one of those mini hoppers and then we need to somehow struggle bus a mini hopper up 10 percent to get it to the smelter that's ideally where we're gonna make the money oh and then i need cornwood cars too man there's so many different cars you need just to, <laughs> just to supply all the industries all right yeah yeah we're, we're gonna go get some logs let's go let's go do that let's go full full reg this Full reg, full reverse, yeah. We're gonna go get some logs, and then, oh, crap. Oh, no, hold on, hold on a minute. All the switches aren't set. Okay, so let's go get logs, and then, uh, yeah. We'll deliver these logs up, get get another log delivery. The sawmill's not full at all, and then we'll buy some cars, and uh, hook them up. Four cars, I think. Betsy's 4%, 49,000 pounds. Are they going to be 12? I don't know. Let's see how heavy one of these log cars is alone. I think they're 10,000 pounds each, give or take. 4%, man. I can't believe this whole line is 4%. It's such a pain in the butt. I feel like if I rebuild this map, I might do the thing that you guys suggested and go all the way around the lake and do a really shallow line around the lake that then goes up to the smelter that way. But, I mean, it'll depend, too, on how they lay out the rest of the industries. I don't even know what the industry chains are. Like, it might be more efficient... While we're going through the freight depot, I'm going to check on the wheat seeds thing. But it might be more efficient to start with, like, something like wheat, for example, rather than logs. We always start with logs. Every time we play Railroads Online, it's logs, lumber, lumber to smelter, smelter to whatever. But now if they make a whole new chain of, like, wheat, cattle, that kind of thing, maybe it's more efficient to start with that chain and then work our way back and do the industrial chain. I don't know. It's going to be exciting. It's really cool. It'll be really cool, too, if the industry, industry chains are, are sort of separated. Like, kind of intertwined, but not really. Because this chain is always like, you have to do logs to get lumber, you have to do lumber to get smelter, you have to do smelter, you have to do iron to get smelter, um, etc, etc. It's always like, everything's connected. Uh, but with, if they have a whole new chain that's kind of separated, it would be, it would be kind of cool. You could have a whole industry just dealing with one side of things, and then a whole other set dealing with another set. But I don't know, it's, it's, I literally didn't even know this update was coming, and then all of a sudden when I was playing, I was like, why is everything different? And it's kind of interesting. There's only one, uh, one crane. Oh, I see, they just added it on this side. Okay, perfect. I, I doubt it's these cars. I'm gonna just try it anyway, but what cars is it actually? It's probably gonna be like the, the same ones it used for cordwood. The flat cordwood cars. Yeah, no, that's just that's just dropped, but that's gonna despawn. All right, what what cars is it actually? Uh, tier one cane sugar. F wait, sugar cane flat crate tools and seed pallets. Oh, it's this car. Logging flat. Crate tools and seed pallet. Interesting. They added a car which is essentially the same thing without the extra logging. Okay, that's cool, but that's not the st the stake flats is for the lumbers, beam lumber rails. Bulkhead flat is for cordwood and straw bales. Low side gondolas for crate tools. Interesting. You put crate tools in this, but you can also put crate tools on the flat completely now. Hmm. It might be. That's interesting. It's going to depend on what they start you with in the new game, I guess. Because they start. Currently, the game starts you with a bunch of logging flat cars. But if they start you with a bunch of regular flat cars now. Then you'd want to connect to the the okay so we need to buy a bunch of low side gondolas that's so cool medium gondolas high side gondolas oh my god yes the world's smallest box car you can put seed pallets in box cars too i'm assuming that the you know the capacity just increases right like little capacity more capacity even more capacity for coal and stuff i, I don't actually know i've never really tried anything we're gonna have to build all these cars agricultural car a skeleton car yeah this is where we get to the medium cars it's the one skeleton car interesting see i don't know the difference now between okay so you have a log flat car here which stores like six right this stores i'm assuming six but it's lighter and then these ones store five which are more efficient because it's like the same one log is one log even though it's half the size 
I'm sure that'll change when they fix the industry stuff up. Also, what the heck? There's half an engine here. Oh, and then here's, here's like another... Inter it, uh, okay, I think some repairs are in order in this factory right now. Okay, cool. So we're gonna... Let's, let's go get some logs. Might as well actually, on our way through with the logs, we'll pick up the empty four stake flats. And, uh, and we'll go from there. And we'll just we'll load them up. They'll be the first four shark cars. But we'll get them on the back of this train as well. And then we can get to the logging or the sawmill. We can drop off the logs and then leave the log cars there. Pick up the new load and just kind of save ourselves a trip. I think I'm still going to get a Shea, honestly. I mean, up the 4%, it'll do a lot. 86,000 pounds. So you can hook it with Betsy. And then when Betsy is pulling up the 4% combined, they'll get 120,000 pounds up the 4. And uh, they won't be able to do the hoppers. It won't do the hoppers coming out of the iron mine. That's going to be the issue. We're going to need a, a class 48 to push hoppers. We'll need a class 48 to push one hopper out of the iron mine to the smelter. Luckily, it's a short trip. But a fully loaded hopper up 10% is going to be a, it's going to be a struggle bus until we get the big $6,000 gear trains. And then, you know, they basically push the world and it doesn't matter. So, yeah, it's going to be good stuff, though. So, I don't know what tracks all the cars are going to be on. I have a feeling they're going to be on the outer two. Is that correct? Yeah, perfect. That's great. All right, so we can come in, we'll grab them, and we'll put them all on the back of this train. Go uh, full steam ahead here. Oh, wait, whoops, that's right, I'm facing backwards. Full steam ahead is actually reverse. I got so distracted trying to look for the new shark cars. Really excited to see the new logo. And by logo, I mean company name. Oh, yeah, that looks great. Shark. Perfect. Perfect, that's so wonderful. Now we're going to just go to the sawmill. We'll drop off four of them using our wonderful little shunt yard that we've got. And uh, everything will be glorious. We'll unload these logs. We'll load up two beams and two planks, I guess. And then we'll head up to the iron mine with just Betsy. Hopefully Betsy can do it up 4%. I think it can. I mean, uh, actually, we got to see how much one weighs. We'll be able to tell right off the bat. It's Betsy has 49,000 pounds of tractive effort up, uh, up 4%. Well, 49,000 pounds of maximum load. Uh, and that's, of course, theoretical and on straight track only, whereas we have curves, so there's extra rolling resistance going around the corners, um, which makes that number a little bit less. But generally speaking, this math has been pretty good in the past, so I'm not too worried about it. But yeah, we're going to go unload this, split this train, no big deal. We can just Dutch drop the last four cars uh, into a different... Ah, yeah, I'm not going to risk it. We can just put it in one yard and then push out to a different yard, and then we'll detach these put those on the back of Betsy and everything will be glorious. Am I fast enough? I am fast enough. That's cool. There's a nice little slope here. Kind of slows you down coming into the industry, which is a little neat. Obviously, this is still technically the main line. And then if we go here, we flip this over. There we go. And now we're going to pull into this yard and we'll go straight on through. This is cool. I really like this industry. I like the way it's set up. I definitely would do this the exact same way if we had to remake the whole map because uh, this is nice. I might put a little bit more of a lead track on this, just so we have room for another engine to be over here and come in, but we could also put a switch off here and have an engine parked here that helps push loads and manage that and that sort of thing. So uh, we're going to come in through here, and all we'll do is once we're, once we're fully in, I can just disconnect this and tie a brake once this is in this yard, although not that it really matters too much. So we can disconnect that and tie this brake. There we go. And that's perfect. We'll pick that up later. And then once we're past this switch, we'll flick this over. So when we come back through, we'll push the empty log carts onto this second one once we get through this switch. And uh, hopefully Betsy doesn't go too far, but Betsy's got to go up the slope there to the dock. There we go. Perfect. And then we'll end up pushing. Betsy's just going to be pulling this whole time. It's fine. In reverse. Betsy's pretty much a symmetrical engine anyway, so it doesn't really matter. There we go. Done. Actually, I don't even think going in reverse matters in Railroads in Line at all. I don't know if there's any engine. I mean, I guess the ones that have leading trucks, but like, I don't know how much the leading truck actually helps keep you on the track versus if you're going too fast, you're just dead anyway. All right. Unloading all this nonsense. Not going to really make much money at all. There we go. Just 
Oh, that's funny. It, like, glitched back and jumped back into the thing. Okay, how much money did that make? 1500 bucks. And I bought four cars, which was 800 So, we're still broke. It's fine. I need another thousand dollars, but that's okay. Now we're gonna push these back and put them into the other little siding here and then grab our plank cars, load them up with four things and see how heavy that is and then see if we can make it up the 4% all the way to the iron mine. Doesn't tell me the empty car weight. The empty car weight is like 2,000 pounds each, right? That's hilarious. And it can load three of them. 3,000 pounds. Okay, so it's going to be 10,000 pounds for beams alone. All right, that's fine. Let's, let's load up... Let's load up three cars of beams. Yeah, it'll be just under 10,000 pounds. So that's actually okay. 10,000 pounds plus the car weight. And I think the cars were like 2,000 pounds each. So it's going to be yikes. It's going to be close. It's, we're only four cars though. 11,000 pounds times four cars. We're okay with that. That that actually is a fine ratio. That doesn't affect us at all. We'll make it with that. All right, so that should load the last one. I'm just going to really quickly teleport over to here. Uh, to make sure our three-way sit switch is set correctly. It is. It's coming out of that side. Okay. And then that should be... That switch over there should be set. Yeah, so we should be good to go. All right, perfect. Let's get out of here. The only thing that sucks about the three-ways is the fact that they don't... Uh, they don't have the spring-loaded thing. So if you come in it from the wrong direction and it's not set, you're dead. Which is why I have that telegraph office right by it. But uh, yeah, we'll definitely need more telegraph offices everywhere else but here we go let's go full speed to the iron mine all right here we go onto the hill still doing 16 mile an hour 15 mile an hour but it's still keeping its 15 15 is what betsy does under its own power so yeah no i think we're good we're under tonnage if we were over tonnage we'd be slowing down already so now we might slow down a little bit on some corners, depending on, you know, if the corner gets a little steeper or whatever, but I think we're okay. We should just honestly just be flying all the way up. And this bridge is flat. You can kind of see it in the middle. The trestle is uh, the flat part. Oh, we are losing speed. 14. Corners a little steep. So yeah, here we're going to shallow up a little bit to under 4%, go across a little flat section. So we'll pick up speed there, and then we'll pick up back to, oh, 13. Okay. I might have spoken too soon. We are losing a little bit of speed. How we got boiler pressure still 120. Speed is 13. Yeah, it's not, it's not great. Come on. Corner is a little bit steep. We're down to 12. Okay, it is going to flatten out. And then we'll go back into another 4% climb. Oh boy. I mean, this should be fine. It should be fine. The only thing that would throw us off is if the rolling resistance was a little bit different around the corners. But it does say 49,262 pounds. And each one of these cars is like 11,000 something-ish, maybe 12. But we should be like 48,000 pounds max load is what I'm thinking. Okay, we're down to 12. Uh, we got a little bit of ways to go here, Betsy. Uh, it, it does, the rolling resistance on corners is pretty, is pretty crazy. I mean, like I said, the tractive effort math we have is based on completely straight track. Now we're down to 11, but then when you go around a corner, 10% or 4% on a corner is a little bit different, right? The grade's not exactly 4% because it's going to look at sort of like an average down the middle. And the inside curve is technically going to be steeper than the outside curve, just based on, you know, how you have to go up a corner. Down to 11, though. I think we're fine. I'm pretty sure it's a little shallower as we get up here, maybe. I think this part's shallower because I had to clear this little bit here. 10% or 10, 10 speed, 10 mile an hour. 9, oh god, 9 mile an hour. Nope, went back up to 10, 9 mile an hour. Yikes. Yikes. This isn't that big of a train either. I think this is why we need the Shea, because then we could run really big trains up this with Betsy and the Shea together. The Shea's gonna, you know, over double Betsy's pulling power here. Speed up, Betsy. Let's go. Anytime now. Anytime. There you go. Nine. There you go. You can do it. Ten. There we go. Yeah, we're over the hump. Awesome. Love it. Perfect. Your champ, Betsy. Don't ever change. All right, so I had to step out for a minute. 
and I'm back now, and we're gonna uh, finish up here. But I noticed one problem when I reloaded my game. Uh, this the, the the planks are sideways. The lumber is sideways on these cars. I'm assuming it's gonna be fine. Hopefully they don't have a hitbox. I, I figure they probably don't, but just kind of interesting that, you know, when you have cars like this, this is a really interesting way to store lumber. But yeah, might be a little bit of a bug there. Either way, we're gonna flick this switch, just slide on through, and now we're gonna head down the 10% death line to the iron mine, which I'm pretty sure means when we get to the top of this, I'm just gonna basically slam my brakes on 100%. I might have to jump on a car and do some car brakes as well. All right, here we go, down the hill. Picking up some speed. Full brake. Just flat spot those tires. Let's go just slightly below full, 95%. That way it doesn't look like we're flat spotting tires. And we are still picking up speed. Let's go full reg in the wrong direction. Oh god, this is not even coming close to stopping it. 35%. Uh, we're dead. We're so dead at the bottom of this hill. 36 miles an hour. This is too steep. This corner's gonna kill us. Come on, slow down. Yeah. 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 I think I think I might have to set some car brakes. You know what? It's fine. We made it. Next time we'll set some car brakes. There's no penalty for re-railing. So we can just flip this back up onto the track, unload our goods, and we're good to go. Let's do a live unload. We can we can hit this. No problem. Perfect. 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 That's great. Just, yeah, no, don't unload those yet. Okay, we'll get that. Perfect. That's unloading. And here we go. Maybe it's a one-to-one -one ratio. Uh, excuse me? There we go. Perfect. And maybe it's a one-to-one -one ratio now, actually. One and one consumes. It makes one. I don't know. We got six and six right now. It's producing. What's it going to take? I thought it was one to two back in the day. It's five and four. Yeah, it is one to two still. Okay. So we do need to bring, on these small cars, we need to bring double the lumber compared to the beams. Uh, but on the big cars, the ratio works out to be one to one because it's six and three. Unless they change the big lumber cars. Anyway, let's get out of here. Eight and a half percent climb. Should be easy. Betsy, four cars. We can do, technically speaking, 11,000 pounds up 8%. Or up 10%, I mean. And each of these cars is 2,300 pounds, so all four of them combined should be only 9,200 pounds. So this should be no problem, even up to 10. And back to the smelter we go. Perfect. But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Really excited to see what the new industry is. I mean, you can't wait for December to see what that update is. In the meantime, we'll keep going on this. How much money do we have now, actually, speaking of? $1,700, so we're still broke. Might have to do a few more trips to the sawmill before we can uh, can afford the uh, the Shea. It is a long trek to get from the sawmill to here. You have to go all the way up and then all the way back. Yeah, or maybe we'll just do more logging runs. Either way, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Make sure, of course, you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And uh, as you can see, we're going up 10%, no problem. But, uh, you know, like, subscribe, and we'll see y'all next time. Oh, are we going up 10%, no problem? Yeah, we're fine. Fine, it's gonna clear it, no problem. There it goes. Perfect. Good job, Betsy. You're a champion.